Welcome to the castle everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42 and today I'm going to do a quick little tutorial on setting up Mutant Year Zero in Roll20. This is a game that I'm actually starting this weekend and so I thought it would be a good idea to kind of give my players a quick little overview of their character sheet. Um, first, a couple things for any GMs who are hoping to run this in the future. Uh, I will be using the Mutant Year Zero character sheet template. There's another one called Mutant Year Zero Alternative, but I'm going to be using just the regular Mutant Year Zero character sheet by Richard W. Casey Levitt, Vince, and Free League Publishing. And the reason why I'm using this one is because it's going to make use of the API uh, system or or we're going to be using the API dice for some of our for all of our roles here. Uh, with that being said, if you want to use the API dice, you do need to go into your scripts uh, where you have your mods and stuff like that, and you're going to search for Mutant Year Zero, no spaces, and then install that. And it is by the Aaron, and this sets up your API dice. Now, as a player, you don't really need to know that. So let's get into the actual character sheet. So here I have my Bay Jill Valentine, and we've already got everything set up, like her token and everything. So our character sheet has five different tabs. We have the character, the arc, the zone log, NPC and monsters, and then this tab at the end is actually going to be for what kind of a character you're doing. And since we're a mutant, we're going to leave it on mutant. But the difference between these other options, like animal, the attributes kind of change. So these kind of correlate with the different supplements for mutant, if I'm not mistaken. Like we have the core rules. We have Alpha Lab 1. There's the Mechatron. And then there's Elysium. But we're going to be sticking with the mutant one for this one. And I've already got my attributes set up. I'm actually going to change that a little bit. There we go. So our attributes are 3, 4, 5, and 2 for strength, agility, wits, and empathy. And as you can see, your health is actually going to be tracked over to the right. So if I take 3 damage in strength, I'm going to click all, all the way to the right or the third one. And that's going to drop my HP for strength down to 0, which means I'm broken. And that's pretty bad. Um, so be aware of that. Underneath your attributes are your four conditions from starving, sleepless, thirsty, and hypothermic. If you have suffered from any of those conditions, just simply click on it. And that's all that needs to be said. To the right, you have your appearance. Although if you have a really good token or picture uh, in your actual character profile, then you could just leave it at that. Underneath that, you will have critical injuries. Now, in order to actually add a critical injury, you just got to click the plus sign and describe your injury. Is it lethal? Uh, what is the time limit for it? Any effects? And it's heal time. And whenever you want to get rid of anything that you create, just click on the lock icon and then click on the red trash can. Uh, just don't forget to click on the lock again so you can actually add some more stuff to it. Underneath critical injuries, we have our skills tab. So I already have some skills set, like endurance is at two, fight is at three, and shoot is at three. So whenever I want to make a skill check, or if I'm asked to make a skill check, I am going to go ahead and click on the box number to the right of the skill number. So in this case, for fight, it's going to be six. So I'm gonna click on six, and it's going to automatically add my dice pool here. So I have a base die of three because my strength is at three. I have a skill level of three because that's how many points I have into fight. And it does not automatically calculate my gear dice. So we're gonna say I'm using a baseball bat which probably adds a one, a plus one to my gear. And with that being said, I'm just gonna click on roll and there you go, it shows your dice, what numbers you've rolled, as well as any facings that you've also rolled for that. So in this case, I believe I rolled one mutation point and one success. But 
we're going to be using the API dice. So if you're planning on using the API dice as well, you're gonna click on this button right here, API dice, and it's going to change to roll API. And so this time when I actually roll, it's going to show me what my uh, successes are or my faces that I've gotten. So in this case, I got one success and then I got one damage on my gear. So this effectively becomes zero, whoops. Now, what I really like about the API dice system here for this character sheet is that I can actually push the roll right from the chat. So I just click on the blue button and it's going to push the roll automatically for me. And it will keep whatever faces that I got previously and only roll the dice that did not show up as any of the faces. So in this case, the three skill dice and the two base dice. When you're finished with your dice rolling, don't forget to click on clear dice pool so it resets everything to zero. Although if you click on something else, like let's say I wanna do a shoot skill, it will kind of, it will override that previous skill that you've put in there. Um, over in dice pool, we also have uh, rolls for D66 and D666s, um, which are your injuries, if I'm not mistaken. Um, then underneath that, you have your initiative. So in order to do initiative, well, first off, make sure that your GM has the turn order tracker set up and ready. Then you're going to click on your token. So let me click on Jill Valentine's token. And then we're going to click on initiative. And there you can see that we've been added to the turn tracker there. We rolled a three for initiative. Underneath your dice pool and skills, you're going to have an uh, area for weapons and armor. So let's say that I have a weapon Let's say that I have a baseball bat. It is a melee type of a weapon, not ranged, and it's going to go ahead and calculate um, that I've got three base dice because I have fight or I have strength of three, and I have three skill dice because I'm using fight. Uh, our gear is going to be plus one, and then our damage is probably going to be plus one as well. Uh, this is an arm's length type of a range, Although you do have some weapons, some melee weapons that can be near and some ranged weapons that can be up to distant. Our weight, whether or not we're carrying it, and any features that we have. And I believe this one's going to be like what jury rigged. This is all off the top of my head too, by the way. And with that, I can click on this settings and it will, sh it will hide everything that I don't really need. So if I want to make a fight check with my baseball bat, I'm just going to click underneath the attack to this button right here. Now what that will do is set up my dice pool. So three, three, I uh, did not add my gear plus one. So that is something that we'll have to do manually, unfortunately. So my gear is going to be plus one and then I'm going to click on roll and it's going to go ahead and calculate that. So my roll is attack with a baseball bat and I got two successes and I can choose to push the roll if I really want to, but that's a pretty good attack for us. For armor, it's pretty much the same thing. We're just going to click on armor and give our armor some name and then uh, determine how many armor points we have, but you're going to want to click on the max first. So let's say I get a max of two armor then I'm going to put my armor as two because if it's at zero, it's going to automatically reset my armor at zero. So that's the max armor that I can have on this. Am I wearing it? Yes. What is its weight and what features does it have? Now, unfortunately um, for armor, this is one where you're going to click on the button at the very bottom, which will fill in my dice pool. And then you'll just click on roll API if you so wish. Underneath your armor, you have your relationships area. So I hate, and then you describe who you hate. I need to protect, blah, blah, blah. And my big dream, um, describe your dream right there. And along with that, you're going to have your any role-playing characters. So uh, I believe that's going to be any PCs. And then underneath that, you're gonna have any NPCs that you have relationships with. Of course, there's a nice area for notes all the way at the bottom, which you can add stuff to. Uh, if you really want, which I would highly encourage because it makes the GM's life easy. All the way to the right, we have tabs for experience, 
for talents, which I'm a little bit disappointed about because all it is is a name. Underneath that, we have our mutations. So if you have any mutations, you're going to add that in there. And uh, those little pips at the bottom are your mutation points. So you're gonna keep track of your mutation points by basically clicking on the dots and that's how many mutation points you have. Now don't forget, the one of the only ways to get mutation points is to push your rolls. So get on it. Underneath that, we have rot points. And I like this tab because you can keep track of not only your rot points, but your permanent rot points as well. So over the course of play, you might actually accrue permanent rot points, which stays with your character for the remainder of their life, however short it is. And so let's say I have permanent rot of two. It's going to automatically fill in two pips. So even if I have five, let's say that I get rid of some of the rot, when I try to go to no rot points, it's automatically going to fill in two. So if for some reason you manage to get rid of permanent rot points, uh, make sure you bring that down to zero so it can, so you can actually have zero rot points filled in. Underneath that, you have your consumables for food, water, bullets, and anything else that you need to keep track of. And then you have gear. So same thing, you're gonna click on the plus sign, add whatever items to quantity and whether or not you're carrying it. And it does keep track of your weapons, any armor, consumables and gear and stuff like that. So make sure that you're keeping track of that because we don't want to be over encumbered. And there's a nice little tab for if you have the pack mule talent, which allows you to carry more stuff. So remember, heavy items, take up two points, light items take up half a point or something like that, and just regular items take up one point. So if you go over your carrying capacity, you're going to be weighed down. So that's pretty much it for now. Feel free to leave a comment down below, give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series, and subscribe if you wanna see more. And I will see you guys in the next video.